Hey, how's, how's everybody doing? My name is John Patrizzo. I'm a physical therapist and starting strength coach. And today I'm going to talk to you guys about the force velocity curve. Okay. Uh, so what you see here is the relationship between eccentric, isometric, and concentric muscle actions uh, relating to uh, velocity of muscle lengthening and shortening. And we're going to talk about how that relates to um, your training and you know, possibly injury potential and managing injuries, okay? So first thing uh, that we're gonna do is define what a force is and what velocity is, okay? So a force, very simply stated, is a push or pull exerted on one object by another. And a force uh, has a few defining characteristics, okay? Forces are vectors, which mean they have a magnitude and direction. And in our case, when we're talking about barbell training, they also have a point of application, okay? So forces uh, that we typically deal with in barbell training would be compression, tension, and moment. So a compressive force is simply stated a shortening force, right? A tensile force would be a lengthening force and moment is a rotational force, okay? So if we're thinking about, let's say compression, an example of that would be uh, the bar resting on your shoulders in the squat, right? So everything under the load of the bar is getting compressed by that force. Now, why is it a force? Well, whatever the weight is, let's say it's 200 pounds, right? That's the magnitude. The point of application is where the bar is gonna be resting on your back, and the direction is gonna be straight down towards the floor, right? Because gravity is pulling down on the bar. So that's what uh, a force is. Now, in terms of compressive force, our skeletal structures do a really good job of managing that. Um, with tensile forces, our muscles, tendons, and ligaments do a good job of handling those types of forces. So if I was hanging from a chin-up bar or the, the bar hanging from my arms at the top of a deadlift, that would be applying a tensile force to my arms. Uh, when we're talking about moment or rotational force, moment is a type of shear force. So with a shear force, we have the two, uh, we have two opposing forces. Instead of being parallel with the, the body, they're working perpendicular to the body. Um, and we need the skeletal structures, the muscles, tendons, and ligaments all to work together to kind of handle those types of forces. Now, velocity is also a, a vector, okay? Velocity, very simply stated, is um, the vector quantity for speed. So it's speed in a particular direction, okay? So how does this relate to muscle contraction? So we have three different types of muscle actions that we're gonna talk about here. We have eccentric muscle actions, which simply put is when the muscle is lengthening under a load. So you start your descent on the squat, your quadriceps are lengthening as you're lowering yourself down. They're working eccentrically during the descent, right? An isometric muscle action is where the muscle is contracting, it's producing force, but there's no change in muscle length occurring, okay? So that would be like if you were, let's say, coming up from your squat and you got stuck and you were holding that position for a few seconds while you've tried to fight to lift the weight, all of the muscles that are trying to move the load would be working isometrically because they're no longer changing length, okay? A concentric muscle action is where the muscles are shortening, right? So you stand up out of the bottom of your squat, your hip and knee extensors are shortening as that's occurring. So your quadriceps, your glutes, hamstrings, adductors, etc. right? So how does velocity of these muscle actions impact what's going on? We know for eccentric muscle actions that the amount of force we're able to produce eccentrically increases with increasing velocity of lengthening. So what you see here, where it says V equals zero, so in the middle, this middle line represents zero velocity, right? So there's no change in velocity here. As we move further away in each direction, velocity is increasing. So what we see with increasing velocities when we're working eccentrically is that we have the greatest amount of force production potential, okay? Now what we also see here is that we are always stronger eccentrically than we are isometrically or concentrically, right? So as velocity decreases and eventually gets to zero, we have an isometric muscle action, right? So eccentric muscle actions are our strongest muscle actions. Isometric would be our next strongest in terms of force production capability. Obviously, because there's no movement occurring, velocity is gonna be zero when we have an isometric muscle action. Now, on the other end, we have 
shortening, right? So as we move further away from zero again, we have an increasing velocity of muscle shortening occurring. So this is our concentric muscle action. So concentrically, we are strongest. We are able to produce the greatest amount of force at very low velocities of muscle shortening, right? As velocity of muscle shortening increases, our concentric force production goes down. This makes sense if you think about, let's say, your Olympic lifts in comparison to your deadlift, right? A 1RM deadlift is gonna move very slowly. We get a lot of force production out of that um, in terms of the concentric muscle actions that are occurring, again, in the hip and knee extensors with something like an Olympic lift where the velocity of shortening is gonna be increased because we're trying to accelerate the load to a greater degree, our total force production is gonna be a lot less. Now, how does this stuff impact your training? Well, for anybody who's ever had a muscle belly or tendon injury, we know that those injuries tend to occur with increased eccentric loading or eccentric overload. If you think about um, an athlete, a baseball player, a football player, a sprinter, pulling their hamstring, very common injury, right? When does that usually occur? It occurs when the forward leg, the knee is extending and the hamstring is being eccentrically loaded, right? So eccentric overload is a typical mechanism of these types of injuries. If you look at Achilles tendon injuries, it's the same thing. It's rapid dorsiflexion of the ankle that stretches the Achilles tendon rapidly that leads to an injury. So why am I talking about all this? Well, if we know that eccentric overload is the underlying cause of a, lot, uh, of a lot of muscle, belly, and tendon injuries, we can help manage or mitigate those by controlling our eccentric stress, right? So for you guys who are just starting out with your training, doing a controlled eccentric on your squats, your, your bench presses, things like that, uh, is going to minimize this eccentric loading and decrease you know, the likelihood that you could have a muscle strain or things like that. If you are dealing with muscle belly or tendon pain, uh, I would suggest maybe trying to slow down the tempo of your eccentric work and that could help to alleviate your pain um, and help you get, get recovered. It's something that we do a lot uh, from an injury rehabilitation standpoint. A lot of times we'll start people back with tempo work, pause work, uh, things like that so that we avoid an excessive amount of eccentric loading on a recovering muscle belly or tendon. So uh, hopefully that made sense and uh, you know that gives you something to think about maybe that you can implement in your training to keep you uh, safe and healthy and more productive. Thanks.